Stamper. Welcome to Frenchie's video. I'm Frenz Martin, independent demonstrator with Stamping Up at FrenchieStamps.com. Today it's the Polaroid technique. It's my Christmas around the year round, uh, really, uh, episode. So for this month, I am using the Christmas barn that it's in the holiday catalog on page 28. So you can add it with the dies. Really, I was not using the die. I'm trying to use simple cards. Usually, I use an everyday stamp set and show you how to do it with a Christmas. Well, this time, I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to use the Christmas barn, use it for a birthday card, and doing a Christmas card. A lot of the time we see a barn in the red. Well, I want more like the old time barn that has just been sitting there, weather, put it that way. So I did it in the gray. And so for the Polaroid, this is more like in the color and this is my Christmas one. And then this one here, I call it my black and white. So it's just the gray and the black and so on. So <clears throat> I'm going to share how I done this, but know that you get choice to add like the dies. So I could add the next one. I will add that. So you can choose what you prefer, but really for the Polaroid, I like to have it direct. So let me share with you how I stamp that. Okay. So because it's a photopolymer, I like to have a foam under. And with that being said, I need to add um, a scrappy paper here. Let me put the scrappy paper there. Now, for the barn, by the way, this here is the... Th Where did that come from? I don't even see black on my hand. Okay, that measured three by three and a half. I'm going to flip that the other way. We're going to stamp that with memento blacking and the reason why I want memento it's because I'm going to use stamping blends okay now we're going to stamp this what I like to do for my barn it's the peak I want it straight up that's how I lined up my barn so I'm going to come about here give a good press now I'm going to stamp the trees and the reed just like, see now, that's pretty straight, right? That's why I like to go with the peak there. I like to stamp <clears throat> my three in my reed before I do the coloring. And I think it blends a lot easier. So even if I'm going to decide to put these, i still going to do the stamping under so then you can see how I done the other one. And it doesn't matter if it's in the black and white or if it's in the color one, I did the same. So, <coughs> excuse me, in this way, this was all stamped with um, memento uh, black and this was basic gray, just those two color. Now for the trees and the reed, I am using um, mossy metal. Now I'm going to decide about where I'm on the tree. Et voila! And then we're going to do the read. And <clears throat> the main reason why I sit stem before you color, so that this way you don't want to color really under the branch, so it's going to be more like the tree that's in the front and it's not weaved together, right? Now I'm going to put my reed right here. Et voila. Oh, I get rocked my stamp a little bit. Now for um, that, I used the blends to color the bow. And I mean, I didn't really blend. I just color. So you're going to see a little bit of the line. I could have masked it, but it don't really show. I think that's perfectly fine. And then for the trunk of the, oh, I like to use the smaller one, the three, I'm using soft suede. Here we go. Now, <clears throat> for the color of, uh, this is the color one, 
for the window, I use, um, de not daffodil, sorry, so saffron and color the window that is like the light that's coming in. Now, you can mix, I mix some smoky slate, basic gray, and gray granite for the old barn. I won't color everything, I'm just going to color a little bit so you see a bit how I done that. So like for the trim, I use a base, uh, not basic gray, but smoky slate, the dark. So I would have done all the trim first. And then here if you, I don't really, just a bit. Now at the edge here, I'm gonna add And the reason why I'm adding this here, it's really going to give some depth for like the side wall and the front, okay? And also on the side here, and I even did the bottom just a little bit. And I'm going to show you a close-up there, and you're going to see a little bit our... Uh, and the top so really that's the main thing and then i use the smoky this was the dark did i say the light yeah the dark smoky slate and the main body of the i use um smoky slate the light but i didn't color the entire thing you see i'm just giving some stroke here and there to give some character and yes, I'm going to do all like the panel of the, whatever, the, the barn doors. I'm going to do all that. <clears throat> oh, and then the top here I did. And this I didn't really pay attention. The tree really, I just went and color it. And if you want to blend here. Here we go. So, and of course, I'm going to do all the trim, but also I used the light gray granite and it did some spot here. So you see, that's how I get my variation of colors. So very simple, but then at the same time, it gives that weather look. So we're going to leave it like that. I will finish coloring it after. Now let me remove this. For the sky and the ground, I use Balmy Bloom after I was done coloring and I used the blending brush. You're going to see, you're going to go on top of that? Yes. So we're going to use our Balmy Bloom and go dark, whoops, go darker at the top. And I'm not even paying attention to mm, really the barn. I mean, I'm paying attention a little bit, but if it touch and so on, it don't really show. And then I'm going to come here. So you see how easy this was to add. Now I just rip a piece of scrappy paper. And we're going to do a little bit of like snow here. And let me turn it around. Here we go. And I'm going to come here. So I just had a little bit of like definition, like you get like. The snow that been pushed by the wind, put it that way, it drifts, right? Here we go. That is it. So now you can see how simple this was really to create. I will add um, my read on this one. So... You know what? I don't think I'm going to add the wreath. 
I like it without the re without uh, the die cut. I think this looks more natural. And then I'm gonna mount that on. So this is three and a quarter by three and three quarter. And this is three and a half by four. I think to make sure I get the right measurement, I will add it on my blog right below you get the direct link. I got my Merry Christmas and inside, and this is all from the stamp set, Merry Christmas to you and yours. May joy fill your art this season. Put the three there. That's how I finish the inside. And then for the birthday one, for the black and white, the birthday, I use go to greeting for that. So this is it for my Christmas year round. If you're not familiar with that, every month I bring you a Christmas card with an everyday card made with the same stamp set. Usually I use an everyday stamp set, turn it into Christmas, but this time I use the Christmas barn and did a birthday card with it. So it's show you the value of the stamp set that can be expand more than what it was showing in the catalog for. That is it for today. To follow me on my blog, right below you get the direct link. And this is my second year doing Christmas year round. So you're going to have a lot of IDs. Come, I get every link at the bottom of the post for this year and the previous year. So you can see many of them. Um, variation of Christmas card doing with regular stamp set. Thank you so much. Till next time. Happy stamping, my friend. Bye-bye for now.